To Revelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Revelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. If you want to truly build that business and build the life, you have got to work on your mindset. We talk about mindset quite a bit on the show because it's that important. You can have all the education, you can have all the credentials, but if you don't have belief in yourself and the right mindset, none of the education, the experience, the credentials, the value that you have to share with the world, none of it can actually come forth. None of it can manifest itself if you don't have the right belief and the right mindset. So people who work in the area of belief and mindset are very, very important to small business owners, repopreneurs, anyone who wants to be an influencer, anyone who wants to be a success in their endeavors. So we are very privileged to have Mr. Nick Dillon with us today. He is an entrepreneur, a best-selling author, a professional coach and counselor. He's also a leadership and organizational consultant and empowerment guru, and he is the specialist and the one to talk to about belief and mindset. He is known as the belief Coach Nick, welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. How did you get started in this area of being a belief coach, and what is that all about? Great. Thank you for asking. Um, I, I often tell people um, the, the the journey to the belief coach has been an interesting one because I was born a little under three pounds and not slated to live more than 48 hours. And as a youngster, I was uh, challenged with some health problems because my lungs didn't fully develop. And so I operate today with a little under 50% lung capacity. And so the journey has been full of bullying and teasing and taunting. And during those childhood, adolescent years, I really was challenged with self-image, self-esteem, and all of those were low because I was bullied and teased. And so at 15 and a half years old, I wanted to take my life and planned my suicide attempt. And for whatever reason, my mom called me actually in the middle of it and I stopped. Mm -hmm. And that for me began a 35-year journey of growth and development. But at the core of it was my belief system. Because during that moment in my life at 15 and a half years old, 16, I believe the names I was called, I believe I wouldn't live to be 18, let alone the age I am now. I believed all that I wouldn't amount to anything. And more importantly, I believed I wasn't good enough. And coming from a space of that to 35 years of growth development, and I know what our belief and mindset can shift us. And it could take us to all the way to trauma, to wanting to not live, all the way up to living and being our highest and best self. And so I've done a whole lot of work, and that has inspired me to help others and young folks to build their self-image and build self-esteem and work with, you know, adults around, you know, living and being, just becoming self-aware and okay of who you are and being comfortable in your own skin and moving past whatever physio limitations, physiological limitations that you might have, and just really truly be your highest and best self. So that's been the journey. I'm excited to be in what I call the helping profession. Yes. And because it gives me the ability to help others um, believe in themselves, or at least point them in a direction that helps them to get their beliefs in alignment with their vision for their life. Very powerful. And and I love how, it, yet again, it, it seems like all of our, our guests, they they have a mess in their life that they turn into their message. 
And that's such a powerful transformation. It all began in your mind, in, in your mindset. Before anything else changed, you had to learn to change what was going on in your own mind, in your own belief systems. Um, and to, to have a 50% lung capacity and be a professional speaker and trainer and, and a coach, uh, that, that is amazing. That inspires me just, just hearing your story inspires me that whatever limitation we think we have, the first limitation and really the only limitation is our own belief and our own mindset. Tell us a little bit more about what you do with people and who do you help? You mentioned young people, and that's certainly important, as well as adults. We all seem to be bound by this um, by this belief, either in a, in a positive way or in a negative way. What do you do with people and how do you help them? Excellent question. Um, with young folks, it's just when they're in the impressionable years and stages of their life, as I was, just really helping them to to grow and build their own, you know, ideal self, their self-image and their self-esteem, um, because that affects them when they are older, as I learned myself. And the unique thing with adults is what I find is that, to your point earlier, everything we do whether it's motivation, whether it's taking action, or anything that we do in life starts with a belief system. And that's either going to drive you forward or it there's you can have such a negative belief that it becomes self-defeating and pulls us backwards or puts us in a position where we take no action. And so I, I like working with entrepreneurs. I like working with leaders. I like working with professionals just all around helping, having them to go inward, which is something no one likes to do. We love to go out and take the classes and, and, and get the certifications and the degrees and all of that stuff that we can go out and take a class for. But most of the inward stuff, there is no class for. Mm -hmm. And to help us go inward and look and become aware and be appreciative of who we are and work on those things that we can't take a class for, like self-image, like self-esteem, like, you know, becoming a better communicator, becoming a great, um, you know, good with conflict resolution, you know, building confidence, you know, and just being okay with who we are so that we can show up and be the best self that we know we can bring. So it's a, it's an excellent opportunity. I do that through coaching. I do that through counseling. I do that through seminars and workshops, all in the name of just raising our consciousness to just think differently. And if we think differently and believe bigger, it's an, it's, it's unbelievable. The things that we can happen that that can happen positively in our lives, just from a, a movement standpoint, when you change your belief system, you essentially change your life. Hmm. If, if this is so important, why is it so hard for people to have the, the positive self image that it's going to take to, to get them where they want to be? What is, if, if there is a common problem, what is the biggest obstacle to, to, to that mindset and that belief that, that positive belief that's going to pull us forward and, and raise our consciousness and, and also the collective consciousness of the people that we touch? Right. Great question. Again, uniquely, um, well, first of all, as individuals, we don't like to go inward because that means we have to actually deal with ourselves. And the other challenge I see is you got to remember the average society accepts average. So society accepts <laughs> average. So there's yeah. only about less than 5% of America is going to do personal growth and development, even though it's a billion dollar industry. 5% of us invest in ourselves, are willing to grow, are willing to work on ourselves and become the best person that we can be. But the challenge is always society doesn't accept more than average. So those few who decide to go that step further in what I call the competitive edge of growing themselves personally are those who end up being in the successors of the world. When we take, you know, another, another, another challenge too is programming. 
for a lot of us, a lot of programming happens in our formative years. And to do that work, that inward work is work. And a lot of people just won't, you know, don't feel confident enough or in some cases supported enough or their belief system is so impaired that doing the work would be traumatized because, you know, if, if I've been self-defeating all of my life and now you open my mindset to an opportunity or a possibility that there can be something greater. And even though that something greater could be good for me, if my normal for 40 plus years has been self-defeating, it's still scary. It's still vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And what I find in my, in my work is that the, the practice of that to go and walk that journey is sometimes, you know, that vulnerability we don't want to do. And that, you know, the fear of the unknown, even though what we want in the unknown is positive. And that's why it's good to work with a coach. It's good to work with a counselor. It's good to work with, you know, a mentor or somebody to support you in the journey. That makes a lot of sense. And and I, and, and I like you, I think we are part of the 5% where we naturally seek out education and experiences and ways to grow and develop ourselves. Then you have the 95% that are, are stuck in this negative programming. Do you think, in, in your experience, do you think that people's life experience, negative experiences, uh, traumatic events, setbacks, can these be wake-up calls for them to say, hey, average just won't cut it for me anymore. Do they get to a point where they're, they're sick and tired of being sick and tired and then they would seek someone like you out? Well, the hope is that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, you, you, you're so right. The hope is that, um, but again, we're still right around that 5% mark and it is the hope that people will do a self-reflection and ask themselves, Hey, am I, am I really happy with where I can be in life? And beyond happiness, do I feel joy? Because happiness for me is temporary. Mm -hmm. You know, is there a joy in me that can manifest itself even when there might be chaos around me? But the only way I get to that is I allow myself through self-awareness to get just a little bit more comfortable with me. And I test, test my capacity. And I am vulnerable to the process of being able to grow and being open to possibilities and things that are out there that are available to me as long as I think and believe that way. Hmm. Um, so, so yes, I mean, the, the opportunity is always there. For all of us, the opportunity is limitless. But how we start or how we move to action starts with our belief system. And if I, my belief is lacking, then my start's going to be different than someone who is thinking limitless. And so the results it's what we end up getting. And if the results are what they are, it just reinforces the belief system again. And so it can become a vicious cycle if we're not aware of it. Um, so it's just something really, really, truly to work on. When I got into this work, it, it has and continues to fascinate me as to how all roads will always continue to lead back to us and our belief system. And when I'm working with CEOs to entrepreneurs to um, young kids, um, I get to see firsthand how sometimes unconsciously we are unaware at what's driving behavior based on a belief system we unconsciously at one point in our lives accepted. You know, that is so true. I, I think that is the one thing that, that really makes a difference especially with uh, rebelpreneurs, with entrepreneurs. Um, I, I think with the people that you work with, CEOs and executives and, and thought leaders, all of us can use improvement in this area. All of us have negative programming, negative self-talk that we catch ourselves in. Uh, if, if we are aware, if we are aware of what's going on in our head and, and we're fortunate enough to be aware then we catch ourselves with the negative self-talk. Um, and, and as you said, and I, I think it's a very important point, we don't like to go inside. It's easier to blame everybody else. It's easier to point the finger. It's easier to become a victim and say, I just can't help it. But your experience um, proves otherwise. 
your experience, your life experience and the obstacles and things that you have overcome to get to where you are. And, and the same story with me and with most of our listeners, it, it shows and it, it proves the principle that we're talking about that your belief creates your mindset, your belief affects your behavior. So what can we do to develop this core belief and this strong mindset for success as as an executive, a CEO, a thought leader, influencer, what do you recommend we do to begin to see some immediate improvement in this very critical area of our mind? It's great. Again, great question, Ralph. Um, I would say a, a good starting point is, um, and I'm big on a pencil and paper exercise, and the pencil and paper exercise that I always say, and I'm, I've been a journaler for 25 plus years. Yeah, so have I. And How about is, that? Is sitting down. Yes, good, great. And, you know, is just writing down on a sheet of paper those one side, all of those positive things that you know about yourself, even though you may know them, write them down. And then on the other side of the paper, just write down what you believe is um, challenges that you have to taking yourself, your business, your relationship, your professionalism, whatever that looks like for you in life, to the next level. And then once you do that, you get to see exactly what it is. And I will tell you, when when you look at that list and you go down one by one, each one of those things that you would have listed has what I call a story to it or, or, or some history behind it. And it all will tie back to an experience. At some point in life, something happened, whether it's trauma, whether it's an experience, whether it was loss, whatever that looks like, back to a belief system that we created in our heads that we hold to be true. And then it became how we saw the world and then how we lived. What I encourage people to do is I have an actual, um, it's called 12, 12 um, top self-defeating beliefs and 12 rational alternatives. And I I give it away as a free gift through my website, um, or they can just go to um, www.believeuniversityfreegift.com. That's believeuniversityfreegift.com. And it gives you exactly some tips. It even gives you an exercise and everything that you can utilize to help you actually do the work to start unpeeling some of the self-defeating beliefs and to get back on track and it, or at least have a starting point to to getting better and to really just I always say it just opening up to possibilities you never thought existed so important and, and i i think that because it's not natural for us to go in deep to ourselves and because it's not something mm-hmm. that we like to do, it can be very uncomfortable. I think getting these resources and these tools and, and having feedback, if it's not in a, in a professional relationship as a coach and someone who is being um, uh, mentored, at least get feedback from someone and get some help, get, get, get some perspective outside of yourself And I really love this idea of getting out of your own, going into your head, but getting it out of your head, you know, doing that brain dump, (laughs) pulling out your journal or or your legal pad or whatever you need to do, write down all of those positive things about yourself and then what you believe to be challenges and get to the story behind it, that negative experience that created the belief that you're still hanging on to today that... Uh, is shaped by that negative experience. And so what you're suggesting is that we can actually uh, point by point go through and refute and replace that negative mm-hmm. programming with something that's that's positive and uplifting as opposed to defeating. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're all, and I always tell people this too, we are all guilty of it. So So never feel like, oh, it's just me. We are all guilty of it. Our self-talk needs to be managed on a daily basis. 
on average, we think about 60,000 thoughts a day, 90% of those, 90% of those thoughts are typically negative. And so if you don't make intentional effort to stay positive, to, to believe positive, to, you know, surround yourself with positive people that support the mission, vision, value of you, then before you know it, you find yourself in a group of people that are average and they stay average. And I've seen people who I know they have much greater potential reduce who they are all for the sake of acceptance. And so not, not the challenge is that we don't want them to do that. We want you to be who you were designed to be so that others will subscribe to that as well. That makes a lot of sense. And and that's really, that, that's highly motivational, especially to someone who is uh, wanting to build the business and design the life that they want. And you mentioned 60,000 negative thoughts uh, that doesn't even take into consideration all the negative programming that you're getting outside of yourself from Absolutely. the average or the negative or the, the media or social media. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what you're saying, Nick, is so important. We have to be intentional. We have to to treat our self-talk as important as, as something that is as important as exercising, eating right, getting the right amount of sleep and Having positive self-talk, all of this is is really, really um, critical, I think, not just for adults building their businesses, but for the next generation coming behind uh, who are kind of at a disadvantage, I think, in, in the world that we live in today. Um, so you are working with uh, with people who need you the most. What are you working on right now that's got you excited that you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh, great. Thank you for asking. Right now, I actually have a new book that's going to be coming out in the fall um, in about a month or so, and it's called um, Beliefs 365, and it'll, you will see it available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all the places that you can buy books, and it's really a book about understanding beliefs, understanding mindset, and how beliefs impact our lives. And then the majority of the book after that is just journaling. And what I do is I give you some some questions and I raise some questions in your mind to just think about your life and just understanding your belief systems. And so it's an excellent book. Um, all my books have work for you to do in them because I'm really big on us getting our beliefs in alignment with our vision and purpose. And I have a leadership event, uh, Live to Lead. I'm part of the John Maxwell leadership team, and I have a leadership event coming um, on October 11th um, here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm also going to be doing what I call a virtual um, self-awareness boot camp. So you'll see that out there. And I have a virtual summit out there that's going to be on September 30th. So I'm really busy all the time, always offering tools for businesses and individuals to be successful and be able to live and be their highest and best self. Wonderful. Well, I, I appreciate your work so much, and I think it is so definitely needed in every area of society. And, and maybe if we work together, we can get that number from 5% up to 6%. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's be positive. Right? I agree. <laughs> we could at least make a 1% impact. So uh, if, if our listeners want to find out more, you can connect with uh, Nicholas Dillon at nicholasdillon.com, and we'll have that link posted on the Rebelpreneur website as well. Nick, any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you would like to leave our audience with? Sure, sure. I, I always like to leave the audience with this notion, and the notion is, is that it takes a moment, just a moment for us to create a shift in our mindset. And that is, in essence, making a positive choice for change. It just takes a moment to be able to do that. And that positive choice can actually change your life forever. But for a lot of people, it takes a lifetime to get to that moment. And so what I would compel and challenge every one of the listeners here today is to make today, right now, your moment. Make a positive force for change and have an amazing rest of the year. Words of wisdom from Nicholas Dillon. 
He is an entrepreneur, a best-selling author, a professional coach and counselor. He's also a leadership and organizational consultant and empowerment guru, and he is known as the Believe Coach. And now you know why. Now that you've listened to Nick for the last uh, half hour or so, you know his heart, his vision, and his mission. Go check him out at nicholasdillon.com. Nick, it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate the opportunity. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.